Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Bialis. That's right, if you like bagels, I think you're really gonna like these. And if you don't like bagels, which is probably because they're so heavy and dense, then you are gonna absolutely love these. Since while these are often compared to bagels because of the shape, they are way lighter in texture and more savory and absolutely addictive. Plus they are way easier to make. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the world's simplest no-knead dough, which is nothing more than bread flour, some yeast, and just a very small amount, some kosher salt, and some room temperature water. And believe it or not, all we're gonna do here is take a wooden spoon or some other heavy duty stirring utensil and we're simply gonna mix this until everything comes together to form a very wet, extremely soft and sticky dough, as in way too sticky to try to knead. Which is fine because as I mentioned, this is a no knead dough and there is no need to knead. But what we do need to do after this is mixed is cover it and leave it out at room temp for at least 12 hours. And then while our no knead dough very slowly rises, the other component we need to prep is the onion poppy seed filling which we'll start by adding some diced onions to some olive oil in a skillet, set over medium heat. And to that, we will add a nice big pinch of salt. And what we wanna do here is cook these stirring occasionally until they soften, sweeten, and turn into a perfect golden brown. And by the way, we wanna be careful not to go too dark since our bialis are gonna get cooked in a very hot oven where some of these onions are gonna char and turn almost black, but we don't want them all turning black. So I'm suggesting we only saute ours until they're about this dark. And in fact, if you see the authentic versions from New York, I think their fillings are probably a little lighter than this. But personally, I like a nice caramelized onion. So this works for me. And then what we'll do once our onions are looking exactly how we want is we'll turn off the heat and add a little bit of breadcrumb as well as some poppy seeds. And then while not traditional, I'm gonna add a little bit of green onion for a little California twist, as well as a little touch of cayenne for a Chef John twist. And that's it, we'll just go ahead and give that a stir and then simply let it cool down before we use it. And then what we'll do once our filling is set and our no knead dough has been no kneading for about 12 hours is we'll go ahead and uncover it and take a look. And if everything goes according to plan, we should be looking at a big bowl of bubbly dough. And at this point we can take a spatula and scrape that away from the sides. And even though we didn't need this, because of that very long 12 hour rise time, we basically had the same amount of gluten form with virtually no manual labor. And what we'll do is transfer that onto a floured work surface. And we'll dust a little more over the top. And we'll give it a little pressing down with our hands before taking our bench scraper and dividing this into eight equal portions or as close as we can get. Which reminds me, you can totally do this by eye and I often do. But if you did want to get perfectly uniform portions, you really should use a digital scale. Okay, just weigh the entire portion of dough and then divide however many grams that is by eight and then simply make each portion that exact amount. But either way, once those are portioned, we will use just enough flour to roll those into a ball, which we do by cupping our hand over the top, and then just rolling that dough around on the table. And that's it, once we have eight nice equal portions, we will transfer those onto some floured parchment paper set on a baking sheet, and we will space these using the classic 21212 method. And as we do this, so our dough balls have a nice smooth surface, we wanna sort of stretch the dough across the top and then kind of tuck it under the bottom and that will give us a little more of a professional look. And then what we'll do once those have been placed down and perfectly positioned is dust a little bit of flour over the top and we're doing that for two reasons. One is because we're gonna cover this with a towel and we don't want it to stick, but also we're gonna to have to work these with our hands into the traditional Bialy shape and some flour over the top is gonna make that a lot easier. And that's it, once those have been generously floured, we will carefully place over a light, clean towel and we'll let those proof for about 45 minutes to an hour or until they've just about doubled in size and hopefully look a little something like this. And at this point, we will flower our fingers and we will proceed to shape our bialis in their traditional ring shape. Oh, and one tip here, you probably want to put more flour down on the pan than I did since these were kind of sticky underneath. So on a few, I did have to dust on a little more flour. But anyway, what we want to do is form these into a ring shape by sort of pressing and pulling from the center out so that we have a couple inches of very thin dough in the center surrounded by a ring of dough that's barely been pressed at all. And we do want to be careful and not tear these open in the middle, but at the same time we want to get that center very thin. 
and almost see through. And then what we'll do once these things are rings is transfer over a spoon of our onion poppy seed filling. And I'm told by my sources in New York and Poland, we do not want to overfill these. Okay, pretty much everyone's in agreement that like one rounded teaspoon is plenty. And I know it doesn't seem like plenty, which is what I thought the first time I did these, but you'll see it's plenty. And if you don't think so, of course, feel free to put on some more. I mean, you are after all the Buddy Holly of your Bialy. And speaking of maybe baby, after those have been filled, we maybe want to take our spoon and smear a little bit up the sides. Okay, not onto the top of the ring, but maybe just push and spread a little bit up from the bottom, which I believe is to simulate the way these are done in the bakery, which is by hand very rapidly. And the baker's literally spending like a quarter of a second on each one. So the filling's never like perfectly neat in the center. But anyway, nothing that's really going to affect the final outcome. And I'm just trying to give you all the ins and outs to the outs and ins. And then once these have been filled, we'll go ahead and give these a spray with some nice cold fresh water. Which is not only going to help with crust formation, but it's also going to help the poppy seeds we're about to sprinkle over stick. Which is the last thing we need to do before these go in the oven. So we will spray and then lightly seed. Staying mostly in the center. And that's it. These are now ready to transfer into the center of a 500 degree oven for about 12 minutes or so, or until they're fully puffed, nicely browned, and look like this. And yes, we should definitely have some nice browning on the bottom as well. And then of course I have to give you the usual bad news. We need to let these cool before we eat them, or at least until they're just warm, but serving these piping hot is not recommended. Having said that, go ahead and do what you gotta do, but I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these onto a cooling rack and let them cool all the way down which was not easy, but I did it. Which means it's now safe to grab one and cut in. And I'll give you a great look at what these are supposed to look like inside. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, these are significantly lighter and airier than a bagel. Which is why personally I like them better. Okay, so that's probably the biggest difference. Along with these are more savory as they don't have any sugar involved. But that's where the filling comes in. All right, the combination of that lean, chewy, light dough with that sweet, savory poppy seed filling, is just absolutely magical. And even though it didn't look like nearly enough, you will understand when you eat one of these, it's the perfect amount. Each bite only needs a little bit. And at no point while you're eating these are you thinking, these need a lot more filling. And believe me, I'm an overfiller from way back, but here I was completely satisfied. And because we use that nice hot oven, a few pieces of onion get charred, which not only looks cool and possibly authentic, but as usual, that little bit of bitterness really elevates all the other flavors. But anyway, that's it. My take on Bialy's. I might only be 25% Polish, but these were 100% amazing and looked very handsome piled up in a basket, if I do say so myself. And of course, if you want to fill these with other things, feel free. To be honest, this classic onion poppy seed is the only one I've ever made. But if for whatever reason you're not into that, I'm sure you'll figure out some other kind of deliciousness to use instead. But whether you make these as shown or come up with some custom variation, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.